Well, hello, and welcome to this tutorial series on Anime Studio Pro 9. I'm your presenter, Mark Bremer. You will love this software if you're a professional or if you happen to be just kind of a casual hobbyist. I use it professionally, but if you're a hobbyist, you'll have no problems picking this up. It's that easy to use. And if you yourself are a professional, you'll love the pro-grade output this program gives you. But you'll also like the way it integrates with post-production video workflows, as well as the ability to import files from 3D applications, from Photoshop, from Illustrator. Really robust tool set. What exactly do we cover in this series? As you would expect, we cover the hows. However, we also cover the whys, and more importantly, we cover the integration of the tool sets that are available to you inside this program. And we do that in the context of doing some fairly sophisticated scene building. Now, how do we do the scene building? What's it about? Well, we work on what you see right in front of you. It happens to be a fun little comic I put together. It doesn't really exist, but we'll call it Danger Chicken for fun. And we look at ways to use Anime Studio Pro to create a pro-level type of animation. While the program lets you build your entire scene if you want to, including illustrating in 3D, we use a very common practice in this project of working with a matte painting for a background. So in the context of having a matte painting for a background, here's how we start integrating the program. We look for ways to bring in anime and blend it with the background so the animated content looks like it belongs to the matte painting. We also bring in some special effects like the mist floating through the scene. We create a false parallax effect to convey the sense of space that really doesn't exist in the scene. We also build unique little items and we bring in assets from Adobe Illustrator. But then we look at how to create cyclical animations that we can then repurpose for reproductions of this asset, saving a ton of time. We also look at some unique masking that takes place, both for some of the special effects, but also for bringing in our character, which we design, rig, and animate throughout the scene. Anime Studio Pro has a fantastic tool set for creating all your own content if you want to. And we look at that, how to bring in sketches, how to work on top, how to rig the characters, how to create automatic animation using dynamic bones that just make it so much easier to create a nice extra level of animation. Now, anime comes with a character builder tool. There is also a bevy of content you can import, and it's great to learn how to work with that. And in the context of how you animate with a rig, I cover some real studio tips and tricks to make that process easy and fast inside your studio. But the other areas that I spend quite a little bit of time on is working with special effects. And the special effects aren't necessarily what you might think of as Hollywood special effects, but more the types of unique things this program can do to give you options you may not even realize the program has. One of them is importing complete 3D scenes into Anime Studio Pro. So if you have Blender, if you have Poser, if you have items like that, View, Maya, you can actually bring in 3D content. Additionally, if you happen to have Poser, another Smith Micro product, you can bring in animated Poser scenes, and they play the animation, they come in with their materials, it's fantastic. However, if you just want to import a character, and then import or animate a Poser character inside the program, not a problem, it does that as well. We also look at some of the particle generation capabilities. Now, most of the samples that actually ship with the program are pretty rudimentary. They're very simplistic, and you can go so much further than that. And so we take a look at how to engage some of these tool sets in the course of the tutorial series. Additionally, you can animate in 3D. You can use 2D animation, as I show here, but do it in the context of a 3D space. So we look at ways to bring cameras through the scene, make the components of the scene play nice with the camera as you work in 3D. Really cool stuff. Now, here's an example of a 3D scene inside anime, but we start doing other things with it, like depth of field. So we look at ways to go ahead and use some of the abilities of the program to help the viewer's eyes get focused on the foreground while creating a nice sense of depth and a full camera effect with the abilities that the program has. If you work with video or you work with animation output from other programs, Anime Studio Pro lets you motion track that footage and then link that to things you might already have in your scene. 
we do a quick little example where we actually apply a decal to an animation that was done in Poser and then brought in. The animation sticks to the shirt. We look at ways to blend it together. Really cool stuff. Other little things that you may not know exist there, like motion blur, things like that. The program also has the ability to lip sync automatically for items in your scene. Now, Anime is not a perfect program. There's a couple little bugs depending on the platform and on the platform I work on. Some of those show up and we look at ways to work with that. Just some real world practical stuff. Finally, there are so many abilities in Anime Studio Pro to create looks that are not cut paper, not the South Park type of look. There are brushes that can be applied, and more importantly, all these styles can be saved and reused or repurposed through multiple animations or used in such a way that if you change the style, the animation updates all the way through it, and we look at ways to build and plan for that. So really all I have to say is, man, there's all that. There's so much more that we cover that I didn't go over in this little introduction. I think you're really going to like this software. Let's get going.